عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولا تقتلوا أولادكم خشية إملاق نحن نرزقهم وإياكم إن قتلهم كان خطأ كبيرا ولا تقربوا الزنا إنه كان فاحشة وساء سبيلا ولا تقتلوا النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق وما قتل مظلوما فقد جعلنا لوليه سلطانا فلا يسرف في القتل إنه كان منصورا صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Surah Bani Israel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving different commands and if you notice after the first command which is وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا that you do not worship only uh, anyone except only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that all these commands listening to your parents fulfilling the rights of the relatives taking care of the needy people the traveler not being spendthrift <coughs> all of these relate to rights of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ayat that we recited today wala taqtulu awladakum khashyata imlaq they also talk about rights of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the right to life of children wala taqtulu awladakum do not kill your children Khashyata imla for fear of poverty. So here, the Arab people, it was very prevalent among them that they would kill their children, particularly daughters, with the concern that they will have to provide for them. Especially daughters, they would not see any uh, clear, tangible return coming from them. A son grows up and becomes a support for their parent in their mentality, but not a daughter. So they would kill their daughters and there's several very uh, stories, very, very painful, very hurtful stories of that time that people would kill their daughters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really has shunned this act in the Quran and through the teachings of the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that do not kill them for fear of poverty. Nahnu narzuquhum wa iyyakum. We provide sustenance to them and you. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that don't think that you are going to provide for them. In today's world as well, Hazrat Mufasirin have written that this population control, birth control, all these kind of things, although they are not similar as killing your children, but they are again, if needlessly done, they are a major sin. And they are also based on the same mentality that a human being thinks that I am the one who is going to provide for my children. It is the other way around. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for them and for you. And why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُهُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention the children first and then you? So the, the, the translation of this ayah would be that we provide for them and for you. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say the, them first? The meaning herein is that because of the dependence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also provides the one who is providing for them. And this is Proven from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well. Inna ma tunsaruna wa turzaquna illa bi zuhafaikum. You are not given, you are not helped, and you are not given rizq except by virtue of the weak among you. So if somebody is taking care of the weak, it may be their children, it may be their relatives, their dependents of whatever kind, they get by virtue of them. Allah subhanahu wa taala gives them and because of them, also gives this person who is taking care of their needs. إِنَّ قَتْلَهُمْ كَانَ خِطْأً كَبِيرًا Their killing surely is a great sin indeed. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا the, other, the next command, although zina or fornication is a right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning it among the rights of creations. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا Do not go near fornication, close to fornication. 
So the first thing that we have to understand is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful that the act of sin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us because he knows our nature, he's telling us to not commit the actual sin, but also not even go near the sin. So by virtue of this ayah, all those places, all those companies and friendships, all those tools and things that we may engage with that take us to fornication. For example, we have friends who constantly like to talk about vulgar things. We have companies who do those kind of things or we go to a place where such acts are committed or the environment is such or we use things that we lose control with. For example, one famous ruling about this is that our cell phones, if somebody does not have confidence, if somebody is such that they would use their cell phone in a wrong manner, in a kind of fornication, by virtue, by, by, through the hadith we know that the Prophet ﷺ has said that fornication is not the fornication, paraphrasing the hadith, not of that specific organ only, but the fornication of eyes is to look at something that is impermissible. The fornication of hands is to hold something that is impermissible. The fornication of thoughts, of nafs, of your inner self is to plan and think about that act. So therefore, if somebody is using a cell phone that they know that they will lose control and they might use it in a wrong way, then for such a person, it is impermissible to keep that kind of cell phone with them. They are supposed to use a simple cell phone which, which cannot be used for fornication of the eyes. So therefore, do not even go near the fornication. Do not even go near the things that will make you don't, don't engage in things or places or people that will take you to fornication. And why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning it among rights of creations? Because innahu kana fahisha wa sa'a Not only is fornication an act of vulgarity in itself, also wa sa'a it is a very evil way. It is a very evil path to take. Because if fornication becomes prevalent in a society, a lot of social evils start to spread in that locality, in that community or in that people. And we don't need to explain this. We are seeing that those societies, those communities, those religions, those ways of living, lifestyles that do not place a bar on this evil, heinous act, then there is so many social evils, murders, alcoholism, people going bankrupt, Many of these things are connected in one way or the other with this act of fornication and not this act of fornication not being barred. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this is a very evil way to follow. This is the social aspect of it and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing it. Otherwise, if somebody has committed fornication, they have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his slaves that they do not fornicate. So they have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much time? وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ Do not kill any person, the life of whom is sanctified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, basically forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, all lives are forbidden upon us of another human being, except that they commit a crime about which the government of the land extends or issues a command that they will be that their life will be taken and then it's the responsibility of the still the responsibility of the government to execute that ruling not an individual responsibility upon anyone relevant to the system of the world today this is the ruling that you do not you cannot kill anybody even if somebody has killed your relative or somebody your your somebody in such a way that you have a right on their life is still you are supposed to go through the system of the law and not kill somebody on your own. Illa bil haq. So this is the haq. That when it, the rightful way of taking a life is only when you have a right, then you go through the system and then take your right. <coughs> Except for a just reason. Woman qutila madluman. And whoever is killed madlum unjustly. Faqad ja'alna li waliyihi sultana. We have invested his heir with authority of equal retaliation. 
so if somebody is killed their heir so their children their son they have the right to take the revenge and this is of two kinds three kinds to retaliation can be of three kinds one is an equal revenge but not more so life for life or blood money the heirs may agree that will take certain money for the life that has been lost or the best is forgive or forgive it altogether fala yusrif fil qatl even in that this person must not cross the limit in the matter of killing so therefore do the revenge that is allowed is only equal to the damage that has been done innahu kana mansura surely he will be helped that person if they remain within the boundaries of sharia then the hand of sharia is behind them they are helped by the system of the law by the islam the system of the islamic government to help them achieve their revenge whatever they choose but it has to be within the boundaries ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم لا اله الا الله الحليم الكريم سبحان الله رب العرش العظيم والحمد لله رب العالمين نسالك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك والغنيمه من كل بر والسلامه من كل اسم لا تدع لنا ذنبا الا غفرته ولا هما الا فرجته ولا حاجه هي لك رضا الا قضيتها يا رب العالمين يا ارحم الراحمين وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين امين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين